Good evening to you. Uh, let's do a video for this week's uh, lessons on uh, this is module three, elasticity and something called consumer choice theory. So I make it. It's a hard decision to make uh, when you're teaching economics. You know where do you put the more mathy things and. I've tried different things. A lot of professors start out uh, right away with uh, with the really mathy things. Others put it off for a little while. Well, this is week three, and um, I'm going to put both of them together. We'll just jump right in um, and go straight towards it. It's a you know it's a condensed class, so we got to do it at some point. So I learned something called elasticity, and then later on consumer choice theory. Both of them involve some numbers. Try to keep the numbers on the simple side so you don't really need to do any heavy duty calculations. Those of you moving on to some higher level economics classes, you'll do the stuff with calculus, and I'll point that out along the way. So, uh, to think about this, I want you to think about what is the most expensive single good or service that you've ever purchased. So, thinking about that, it's, it's often a car or, uh, or house, sometimes a boat. Uh, something like that, explain why we make that purchase. And so, uh, you know, we all have different reasons for why we make that purchase, right? But it's a good thing to think about there. Um, now, elasticity refers to how sensitive we are to a price change, right? So this kid has gone from regular lemonade to organic lemonade to grass-fed and organic lemonade. And an economist is going to want to measure how much quantity he's going to sell it at the different uh, price levels there, right? So is he going to sell, you know, a lot of regular uh, glasses? That would be my hypothesis, but I want to know, you know, relative to the organic type, how much more or less is he going to sell uh, of those two, uh, assuming they're, they're different products, right? I want to know uh, what's going on there. And if they're the same product, then that's really good. I'm just changing the price. I want to know what's going on with that. So I want you to brainstorm in your head here. Three products people don't stop buying as much when the price rises. So in other words, you get a 10% increase in the price, and it's going to not cause a 10% drop in quantity demand. And we're not going to cut back by at least 10%. We might come back a little bit. So hopefully you've had a chance to think about that. Um, so for me, you know, I wear contacts, so it's going to be something like contact solution, uh, deodorant. Uh, the deodorant can probably triple in price. I'm still going to buy it. I don't want to be the smelly guy. Uh, and now uh, we've got a, a very small child in the house, so you know diapers, right? I'm still going to buy the diapers. It may not uh, may not buy them quite as often, right? So uh, the term for this is inelastic demand. Okay, so inelastic demand means um, that somebody is not very responsive to price change. Okay, so here we've got a product or a service really is dialysis. Okay, so reading this graph, a uh, person needs to get just over two doses of dialysis per week. Uh, they're willing to pay $100, they're willing to pay $200, $300, $400. You know, right up here, they're going to start to cut back just a little bit. Um, but essentially, they're going to get that. Now, that, that sounds pretty extreme. It's expensive. Um, but, you know, if you really take the longer view of this, yes, it's expensive, but without that, uh, process this person's dead, right? So that's a good example of uh, inelastic demand. And so, um, what really here's the things that are going to cause this: if if a good doesn't have very many substitutes, okay? If um, if you know like dialysis here, there's there's kidney transplant or dialysis. That's it. Things like deodorant don't have very many substitutes, right? So this is the biggest thing that's going to cause inelastic demand. I don't know why I put that in quotes. It shouldn't be in quotes, right? So. Um, the next one's a little tricky. If it's a small part of the budget, okay, so think about things like wooden pencils or notebook paper, things that are very cheap, uh, something like salt, right, has a very inelastic demand. You know, the, the price could go up, you know, 50%. We're not going to buy 50% less salt, right, because salt is so cheap. And this one also, for really wealthy people, they tend to have more inelastic demand um, because when they buy goods or services that we think are more expensive it's not as expensive to them relative but you can always think of the uh, the, cheap, the cheaper products next if they're they're goods that are consumer can thinks are close to needs right if they feel like they need it um, 
you know, an example of this, like housing is a category, food is a category, jackets in cold weather areas, that's a category, okay? Uh, example of some sort of life-saving drug, right? My uh, grandfather, he was on insulin because uh, he was diabetic, and uh, so he, he would have paid pretty much any price, right? Um, timeliness is another one, right? So if you don't have a lot of time, you tend to face a more inelastic demand. An example would be at a convenience store, right? People out of shopping at a convenience store have a more inelastic demand than um, people who shop at maybe, say, Walmart, right? So you have more time when you're at Walmart than you do at the convenience store, right? So how, how rushed are you? Um, what's the time horizon of this? purchase okay so a good question is why does the government often control prices or at least look into controlling prices of of things well this is because they know that we're still gonna pay it and they're trying to be sensitive to the consumers needs okay now uh, one thing that's interesting about economics is that in addition to this being dialysis this is also a demand curve let me see if I can write on this oh I cannot um, this is also a demand curve for an addictive illegal drug, right? An addictive illegal drug is going to have uh, the, the consumer, uh, the person that buys that drug, is going to have a certain level of um, demand that they, that they need to get their fix, okay? And they're willing to pay whatever, whatever that price is, right? So um, as the price goes up, they're still going to buy it. This is a problem because they often can't hold down jobs. They end up, uh, you know, looking into cr criminal aspects uh, that eventually they'll get caught for, and we end up, uh, uh, you know, we end up paying for that. So, you know, one way to think about the, the drug war, or drug problems, and things is instead of uh, going after the supply, maybe flattening out this this demand curve, right, and through education or uh, you know alternatives, sort of these alternative products that can be there. So, a lot of economists uh, think about that kind of problem. Okay, let's move on to the the other type of demand. Uh, three products people stop buying as much when the price rises. So in other words, a 10% increase will cause more than a 10% drop in quantity demanded. If you want to pause the video for a second and think about three. So uh, three things, you know, things like uh, chicken, beef, uh, Coca-Cola, things like that. Uh, lots of products face this opposite problem, and, and this is uh, an elastic demand, right? So here I've graphed uh, an elastic demand. Notice it looks a lot different than the than the inelastic demand. So the um, <clears throat> this is nice apartments here in, in our city, Tucson. Okay, uh, so in Tucson you can get a nice, uh, you know, pretty nice one bedroom house, or sorry, um, not house, apartment, rather um, for you know seven to eight hundred dollars. Okay. And as the price goes down by just a little bit, you end up with a much larger uh, increase in quantity demanded, right? So that that price goes down. And the question is, why isn't there much demand, or really any demand, past $1,000? And the answer is uh, that you can rent a or you can rent well, you can rent a house, or you can buy a house, right? My mortgage is is not $1,000, and um, for a lot of people, uh, the housing is a uh, and buying a house is a substitute for a nice apartment, and if the nice apartment uh, were to go down in price, they they may look into to renting. Um, but uh, past a certain level, uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna switch over to a house, right? So it's a very elastic demand. Okay, so that's what that's called. Uh, what this means is that consumers are very responsive to price change, right? So you really have to pay attention to this one if you face this in your in your business. Um, I'm going to say these are most normal goods face some kind of elastic demand. I don't know why that's in quotes. I need to get in there and fix the slides there. Um, if a product has many substitutes, okay, it's going to face an elastic demand. So if you think about beef, beef has a pretty elastic demand because if the price goes up uh, in beef, you know, by 20%, we're going to switch to pork or fish or, uh, you know, some sort of veggie burger or something else. Uh, so as as goods have lots, you know, tacos, hamburgers, all of these things. I mean, a lot of food food examples here, but uh, a lot of products that have lots of substitutes face this very elastic demand because uh, consumers will just switch to the other product. Okay, so that's the the number one determinant. Uh, next is the timeliness. So if you don't buy this product very often, so if it's something say like. Um, 
oh, uh, you know, an expensive vacation or a washing machine or a refrigerator, you know, mattress, you don't buy those very often. So that's a very elastic demand, right? We, we wait for those things to go on sale. You can think about the car, car manufacturers do that. Uh, if this is a luxury item, right? So some the jewelry has a very elastic demand. Uh, products that you just don't really need to, to survive. They're, treat yourself is the uh, phrase with that. It's an elastic demand. When the price goes down, people will uh, increase consumption by a lot. And when the price goes up, uh, they'll really cut back on that. Okay. And if it's a big part of the budget, people will often wait. Okay. And they'll say, you know, that's really expensive. We're going to hold off. We're going to wait for it to go on sale. Why is this important to think about as a firm? Well, when you're setting your prices, uh, you need to know uh, what's going on with your price. What do I do with the price, right? If I raise my price, uh, will I lose a whole bunch of customers, right? It's a very important concept to think about this. So here I have a little cartoon here. This guy is, uh, he's saying uh, that it's a good price for Coke, or the cola rather. Uh, and then when the price goes up to $3, he walks away and doesn't buy it, right? So that's uh, elastic demand, okay? Now there's a formula. Let's see. I'll preview the formula here. Let's see if I can right on this guy. Can I write on this? Where is, how are we doing on that uh, tonight? Um, can I write on this? Thought I was able to. There's a glue. No. Oh, well. Um, well, I guess we'll have to table the formula. Tor fit formulas in another video, and I'll make sure that uh, that we get more on that. Okay, so I'll start with the current slide. Go. I'm not sure I can't do this. No, I can't. Can't get this. Okay. So a good example of this was from several years ago. Uh, although Netflix is doing this yet again, Netflix raised their price. So they raised their price by sixty percent, and they lost uh, six hundred thousand customers. Right. So if we knew the total customers, we could actually calculate the elasticity. Um, but here we have this increase in price, and then they've lost all these consumers, right? So our customers, rather. And Netflix is set to do this again as I record this video. So uh, we'll see if they lose customers, right? If they don't lose very many customers, we'll say that Netflix is an inelastic demand. If they lose a higher percentage of customers than their price change, then we would say that they have an elastic demand. So this is the kind of work that economists do, okay? Um, now, in reality, uh, consumers face both kind of uh, demand. Most most demand curves are curved, and it really depends on where the price is in terms of the elasticity. So, down here, this is a very elastic demand, right? And so, what that means is a change from three to two dollars is going to be a big increase in the quantity demand. And so, who are these people? These are you know, joy riders, high school students, people driving on vacation, things like that. As the price goes up, they really cut back. And as the price goes down, you know, they may drive for the sake of driving. You know, when I was in high school, this is one thing I would do, right? It was, gas was 99 cents a gallon. I would drive all over uh, the town where I grew up and, you know, just for the sake of driving, right? Pretty silly, but whatever. Um, now, over here, these are these are people that often make these kinds of decisions. So as the price goes up towards $4, they may not take a vacation, they may consider carpooling, things like this, as most regular people. From uh, B to A, these are gonna be people who need, uh, you know, need to drive around. So you got your Uber drivers, your truck drivers, you've got uh, delivery firms, um, people that, um, you know, wealthier people, so not as big a part of their budget, uh, those folks. So in reality, things like gasoline end up with, uh, all, you know, really all of them, right? So that's why we call them demand curves, right? And so we say at different prices, we see different uh, elasticities. I'll leave this in the notes here for you. Um, this is, uh, you know, pretty elastic, uh, or sorry, inelastic and then elastic. And then right here is what's called unitary elastic. This is movie tickets kind of have this as an increase in price of 15%. It's going to cause a decrease in quantity demanded of 15%. Okay, last thing, I'll leave you with this for practice. So these, this is a little table and I'd put this in your notes if I were you, uh, or print out this slide and then, um, and then you can go ahead and uh, fill it in for yourself. So here's the good or service. Is it elastic or inelastic? And then why, right? So as you go through this, um, and if you want to email me, I'll, I'll go over the answers with you. Uh, just got to talk to me about it. No problem. So this is uh, an intro to elasticity. 
elastic, inelastic, uh, and there we go.